and we are doing knife skills today because what happens as you get a little bit older and you start cooking a lot more and it's not just chocolate chip cookies and helping mom make a key lime pie but you're actually in the kitchen and cooking and Emily here is on the cusp of 14 aren't you pretty soon here she's ready to make dinner for the whole family and we're going to go through some important knife skills because when you understand how to use a knife properly when you understand how to sharpen a knife and how to handle a knife then you pretty much can handle in almost any task in the kitchen. So Emily's gonna learn, first of all, we're gonna go through and talk about what all these knives are okay. and identify them. And then we're gonna go through and we're gonna sharpen one knife and chop an onion. The fast way, Chef Emily style. You ready? Yeah. Okay, well first of all, this is not a knife at all. Do you know what this is? Is it a knife sharpener? Well, it, it is, but it's also, they, um, it's called a steel. And it's different than a stone. A stone is something that you put on the on the ground there and you and you sharpen with. And then a knife sharpener, which I would suggest you never use, will ruin your knives. But when um. once you learn how to use a steel, it will completely make all of your knives really sharp. And believe it or not, when you have a, sh a knife that's dull, that's when you have danger because it'll slip off what you're cutting and go right onto your hand, and that's when you get cut. Okay. Set your steel, and we're going to be learning how to do that. And I'm going to show you something with this. You hold it like this, and you see these little balls? Yes. That keeps it from going down too far and cutting you. They're protectors. <laughs> okay. All right, first up, you know what this one is? No. It's a bread knife. See the serrated edge? The only thing you should ever use this for is bread, cutting bread. Important, though, because the serrated edge keeps it going through the bread without squishing it. So you use a regular That's knife. Yeah, yeah, it is good. You know what this one is? It's a carving knife. So is that, or no, this is a boning knife, sorry. Ooh, my bad, it's a boning knife. So this will take the bones out of a chicken if you're so inclined. Chicken. Yes, but my suggestion is you let the butcher do it. <laughs> <laughs> and these two knives are carving knives. One's larger and one's smaller. That was easy. Mm -hmm. And then we have you know what this one is? I don't know how is your pronounce it. Is it a paring knife? Paring knife. Paring knife. Yeah, it pairs things. So you can take and cut and and do like this. Like let's say you're, t you're taking the skin off an apple or a potato, but that's how a paring knife works. Like that. You don't really. You can cut the e ends of things off, but we use a French knife for that, and we'll talk about that. And then this little serrated blade like it this. Looks like it looks like another bread knife. But you could use it for a smaller piece of bread or. A tomato. 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 And this one, you know what that's called? Mm, not really. It's called a santaku, and basically it's it's a Japanese version of a French knife. It has a little bit of a, uh, an edge on there that's a little rounder so it can rock. And then these dimples on either side. What are those for? That's to make the food fall away from your knife and not stick. It's Smart. pretty cool. You like that, huh? And this is my very first French knife. You can see my, I think my son did that, but somebody took a chunk out of it. Uh -uh. But this is your standard French knife. And it's the same kind of a deal where you do the chopping. And then this is just the smaller Emily version. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, those are all your knives. So, and the other thing is a knife in a block is a safe knife. You don't want to leave your knives hanging out like this. Oh no. You put them back as you use them, and that way you don't accidentally ever do anything crazy with them. Don't leave them around with small children. <laughs> you think? Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna teach you right now how to do an onion the safe way. Now, first of all, if you'll notice, I've got a slick counter here and a, and a slick cutting board. Now, I could put this knife this knife up with this onion and we could be having some of this action. So to, to avoid that, we put down a slightly damp cloth and now we have a cutting board that's not going anywhere. Okay? Okay. So, onion. You know which side's the root side? That yep. side. It's the root side. And then this is the side that comes up. And this is the side that holds all of the oniony smell and makes all the fumes come out and makes your eyes water. So what we do is we cut this end off and we take this up like this and we're going to leave that end on there 
just a little bit. And I'm going to take this off. I just want to get this onion prepared so you can see exactly how it is that you're going to cut it. Okay? That's the skin, right? Yeah, and the onions are, you know, multi-layered. You can see, you can, you can just keep pulling off these layers till you get down to nothingness. But that's how an onion works. And uh, see how we've left our little, our little end on. So yes. <clears throat> this is the safety trick that you need to know about. When you're cutting, are you right-handed? Yes, ma'am. All right, when you're cutting, you want to make sure that your left hand is the holding hand and you do a claw. You don't put your hand out like this or like that. And, you know, there goes your flute playing fingers. <laughs> <laughs> so we put your hand like this and we make a claw. You see that? But before we do that, first of all, we want to get rid of this rocking motion. So we're going to work with half an onion. Let me just make that half. And then I'm going to have you do the rest. Get rid of that mess too. Now what you're going to do here, I'm going to show you how to do this and then you're going to take care of that side. Okay. We're going to make some radial cuts that go down like this. And you see what I'm doing here? I'm working with how the onion is layered. You see how it goes back and forth like this because we've cut it in half? Well this is when we put those when we put the knife cuts in there, it's almost like we're cutting a half a pie. You see how that all comes apart? Like that? Right. And how it has all those different layers? Mm -hmm. So as we chop like this, we're going to have it all into a nice dice so we'll be able to work with that. So the next part that I've done, now that I've done that knife part, is I hold my hand like the claw and I put my knife down where I'm going to start, make one cut, then my knife comes up and I do it again. And then, look, you can start going pretty darn fast and you get a nice, even cut. And then you just take this guy and you get rid of it. What do you think? You think you're up for That's the cool. job? Yeah. It is cool. And do you see how, if you notice, neither one of us are crying because it's all the stuff is in the, in the end. Do you like that? Yeah. Remember that. It's the end. It's the nasty looking end. Mm. Not the little twirly part, but the end part. Nope. Okay. So we're going to take that onion and put this. We'll use this onion. We're going to go ahead and put this onion in our bowl. And oh, just, just so you can see. You see how it all comes apart? And now how you have it all diced? Mm -hmm. Because there's, no, there's really no need to have perfected chopped onions. What you need is you just basically need a, you need a job done, right? Right. So, and I'll tell you something, pretty much almost all recipes that you're making, like when you're making dinner, they pretty much all start with a chopped onion. So, you're on, Emily. Let's see, you go to town, girl. Okay. You make those radial cuts. You remember how we're going to do the claw? You get over here, get in front. <clears throat> Start that way, left hand. Okay. Left hand for the claw. So, there you go. And we're gonna make. And the you're cuts gonna make, first, yeah. Right? And you're gonna hold that knife like you mean it. All right. Yeah, nice and firm. Okay. So. Go ahead and make a radial cut. There you go. Good. That's excellent. Very good. And one more. Very good. Okay, now chop like you mean it. Okay, get let's get the get the tip, tip down onto down. the ground. Okay. Yeah, get the tip on the ground. Now hold your knife, good firm grip. There you go. Okay, bring it up. Do it again. Okay, I want to show you something. Okay. You've got, you're holding your knife sort of like this. You got it like this, so you got firmness here, and look at my hand. I'm holding this like, if someone to knock my hand, that knife's not going anywhere. You had it like this, your knife's going to go like that. You okay. got to hold this like, you, like your life depends on it. Look how you just open your hand, grip it, down you go, crunch, crunch, and crunch. Okay? Claw. Get your fingers 
a little bit further back. Hold that knife like you like you mean business, girlfriend. Down you go. Hard. Make it happen. Down you go. <laughs> there you go. You're good. See? Now rock it. Rock with the with the knife. Right. Let's do it again. Bring it down. Bring it down. Rock it. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Watch your fingers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yep, that's it. See, now, here's the thing. You're good. You're good. Uh -huh. You got it. I don't want you to go too far to the edge. When you do this a bunch, you will have this down like nobody's business, and you'll be able to fly those onions out the door. You saw how quickly I could do that? Yes. Well, I can do it a lot faster when I'm not showing somebody. I can even go faster than that. But, what it, but see, look how easy this whole thing was. Now, I'm going to show you what somebody told me one time. Just so you can have an understanding of how, what an incredibly important skill this is. I had somebody one time email me and they said, I don't understand why everybody says your, restaurant, your, your recipes are so fast and easy. It's so hard for me. This is how she was doing her onion. She had it. So say if this is a whole piece of onion. She'd take one piece like this and then she'd take it and she'd chop these little pieces like this. Wow. Yeah, one slice at a time. So imagine doing an entire onion like that and then getting some bell peppers and doing those two. And me too, you'd be here all day chopping. Right. So this is a basic knife skill that you need to practice. And remember, you need to have your flat surface. That's why we cut the onion in half. You need to always have your claw and you have to have a tight grip on this knife. And this point, when this point is down, and it's moving like this. Look, it's kind of like a locomotion. Look at how my arm is yeah. going. Then you've got it going. And this, this tip being down on the, on the cutting board like that, that's what keeps it safe. And your hand really moving down, that's what keeps you safe too. All right, so there you go. Basic knife skills with Emily.